Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we have quite a few kind of cool things over here with the brand new PlayStation actually now coming. We also have some brand new Bridges general news over here from the CES. I want to try to highlight some of the really cool special things that have been being announced over at the conference itself. Some of the stuff's actually really, really cool. And as well, some kind of fun news for some general gaming stuff. So let's go and talk about this all throughout this video. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below in case you guys want to follow. And of course, the Samsung pre-orders too as well. If you guys want to go check out any of the type of stuff that is all linked down below. Let's go and dive on into the video itself. So if you guys have missed it, we actually made a big, kind of like the big picture of PlayStation and Sony as of last night, if you missed, if you guys want to check it out. But when it comes to the CES 2024 is now ongoing. This is like a really big like, convention, hub, whatever you guys want to go call it for just a lot of big tech. So like car companies, phone companies, Sony, uh, and a lot of other various, they just TV stuff, computer stuff, everything is all being showcased and highlighted at this event. And that basically kind of means that we have cool stuff to show. And then even this brand new PlayStation stuff we're going to show, and also some very, very cool brand new tech. So throughout this video, let me know if you guys would want to go buy this type of stuff, or if you guys like this type of stuff. And, well, just let me know. I'll go read through all the comments. So, first and foremost, PlayStation did have a cool thing that happened yesterday. They, number one, had a chance to drive a car with their PlayStation 5 controller. They've also had a chance to go and kind of highlight the cool brand new car collaboration they have working with. They also brought that to Gran Turismo. But they have a real-life working proper car with really cool internal stuff like it's it's cool it's just like a nice higher end uh like hybrid type style car all around pretty sick we also had a brand new confirmation of the like new shows coming out with like god of war and also horizon and those are in the works as of right the second a few new movie things and a lot of cool things overall but one of the coolest things over here when it comes to the playstation is right the second there are brand new playstation console colors coming over here from ces now this is kind of cool you guys have actually had a chance to see PlayStation's been pushing a very large, I guess, amount of pressure slash attention instead of having like custom limited edition consoles like how they've done before, like it's an all all in one. They now want to go push for more of these like say console covers, and so far these look sick. Now, we've already had a lot of these types of colors already for the prior PlayStation 5 for both the disc and digital. So I'm sure you guys have seen it. We've also seen other limited edition ones, such as the Spider-Man covers, which were very sought after and resold and scalped a lot. And the LeBron James covers, too, as well, which looked all around really cool. They had, like, a special collaboration with it. But now they're finally bringing a lot of this type of stuff to the PlayStation 5 Slim, and we like to see it. Thing. Sony now brought its brand new con uh, console colors to CES. We also have some pictures you guys can even see. I'll show a few of the other ones in the articles where the PS5 Slim really pops in red and blue, and the silver model is a nice callback to the original PlayStation itself. I think the silver, if I'm looking at all these, looks like probably the coolest one. It looks like the initial white console with that nice little special hue on it. Now, I do think the blue and the red also look very nice and sick, but I do think that silver one is definitely drawing my eye. Let me know which one you guys like the best down below. So the PlayStation 5 Slim is barely a couple of months old, but Sony is already preparing to release new side plates for the console itself. And the company is showing off a trio of these new color options, blue, silver, and red. And here at CES 2024, the side covers will start at $55 when they go on sale in the very near future. So two things to note is number one, these are brand new. I do not believe there was any uh, like notion or mention of these before. A lot of people probably assume because if they had the console covers for the prior, prior consoles, why would they not want to do it for these ones? But I do believe this is the first mention we've had a chance to see so far that these are coming and they are, well, obviously, hands on, we get to go and see what they look like. This looks really, really cool. So unlike the standard white PS5 Slim, they don't have the glossy and matte split between the top and bottom plates. And I prefer the mat all the way, so I'm happy to see that. There's no avoiding dust in that black uh, center section of the PS5, unfortunately. And I think even for this, it does actually even show some of the dust on this, which kind of stinks a little bit. Like, I mean, it's like, it, it does stink. You're going to get, like, fingerprints, handprints, dust. But uh, the outside does look very, very nice. But you guys kind of can see the, like, the little smudge lines probably from people touching them and just dust and everything just being collected on it. That does stink a little bit. Like, something to note. We'll have to see if the final version fixes that, but probably not. Uh, but these look actually very nice. It also does kind of seem like they do have a matching top to bottom. That was a big issue beforehand, although I'm not 100% sure based on the photos itself. So Sony's playing it fairly safe with the colors here, but they all looked pretty eye-catching the show floor. I think they all look sick in my opinion. Want to hear your thoughts down below. This red is certainly more red than the cosmic red accessories for the original uh, PS5. And personally, they thought that they were partial towards the silver and evokes some of the original PlayStation nostalgia. The black side plates are also in the works. I personally think just like depending on the photo, 
This photo right here, I think the red does look and shine up a lot. Like the controller looks a little bit more of a vibrant, like they said, looks sick, looks shiny, and then the actual console itself also looks very, very cool. The gray also, I think, just have, if I had to pick and choose, like I said, I'd probably buy the gray one first, because I think the controller looks sick. I think the console looks okay. It does kind of remind me a little bit of the base console, but I think it looks nice. It's a nice extension for it. I'd probably do silver, then I'd probably do red, then I'd probably do the blue. Now, I, that probably just depends on your favorite color, how your room layout is, colors, or whatever, but I do think that red like, almost looks like that nice, cool sports car vibe, where it just looks cool, looks vibey. I like it. That's why I might say, but these all look really nice. They look really presentable. So it's also about just the very bright show floor. Letting that's responsible for that, they say. But when combined with the optional vertical stands, these colors do give off a neat reflection. And I think this looks sick. They even have the nice little PlayStation logo. They have the brand new uh, controller bottom too as well. Like, I think this is sick. Like, I think this is all like thumbs up. I think it's awesome. So the PS5 Slim continues to come with either the disk drive or as a digital only version, but the detachable design of the drive, which can be purchased after the fact and added to the digital model, has no doubt simplified their manufacturing process enough to bring costs down. And last month as well, they did go and specifically say that 50 million consoles are out there. But this is in honor of Chris Welch to give him a little bit of credit in The Verge. But overall, I think these look sick. Like, I generally think all these, like, look very, very nice. Now, once again, though, it kind of depends maybe on the lighting. Uh, they all look good. If I had to buy, probably go with the gray. I want to hear all your thoughts down below. Now, some intriguing other stuff, though, is that CES had a lot of really nifty, cool things. And I want to kind of highlight some of these really quick, where these some of these things literally have transparent TVs. Now, this is why I like think one of the highlights of the CES, where they have these Samsung OLED transparent TVs that are just cool. Like, you can basically go and look through the actual TVs themselves, and there's all around look very very nice we also saw a really big influx of a lot of different types of ai both for nvidia graphics cards and that type of tech but as well utilizing ai in terms of things like roombas or they have like tv projector roombas and like personal assistant type roomba things they're not necessarily roomba but just kind of give you guys the rough example of what it is and i think a lot of this type of stuff is very nifty as well, we've also keep on seeing a lot of TV improvements, but we're also looking at a lot of monitor improvements as well. We saw up to like some 400 and 300 uh, hertz monitors. We've also saw some brand new improvements, a little bit more slimmer monitors too as well. And we also saw even some cool RBG tech from places like Razer. For some laptops, they have like RBG mouse pads and I also involved mechanical keyboards into the laptops themselves. We've also seen really cool backlighting too as well. And I think even brand new stuff from things like say Nanoleaf, which is really nice to go and see. We have also had some brand new stuff such as like smart key lock technology and also a really kind of cute thing from animals where they basically have a chance to have like sensors in their uh i almost want to say claws but they're not their claws their collars where basically if you go by the door itself it might have an automatic chance to open and unlock if your animal's near let's say if an outside dog or cat or they're going potty or whatever it might be they have a chance to walk back in on site which is very nice to see we have also seen a few other little various things such as like little drink drops a new phone cases and all that all throughout ces and as i mentioned before we have the cool things such as these brand new uh console covers, and as well the Sony brand new technology and shows that are all being announced at CES. If any cool stuff does keep on happening at CES, I'm going to let you guys know, so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on for all of that. But I do think it's all around really cool. I got the, the idea of all this type of stuff. Now, last but not least, some kind of nice news, because I, for some reason, really like Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk actually did go and deem the most brand new expansion as a proper commercial success. So this actually was hitting pars with as close to the Witcher 3's expansions, which, as you guys know, Witcher 3 and also Cyberpunk have been pretty big driving forces for money for CD Projekt uh, Red. And overall, it just seems like it's really good. So speaking of IGN, CD Projekt Red confirmed that Phantom Liberty has a tatch rate of around 23%, meaning that at least 23% of the players who bought the base game also bought the expansion, which I think is actually a really, really insane number. As revealed by the co-CEO Michael Nowalski uh, on X and Twitter, the uh, Witcher 3's Hearthstone expansion had a 22% attach rate, and Blood and Wine had a 24% attach rate within the first three months. So overall, it seems like this is pretty much on par of what they expect, and these ratios and numbers are very, very good. Although what proposed uh, Phantom Liberty is even further, however, is its release around two years and nine months after the base game launch, and the Hearthstone Stone arrived around five months after The Witcher 3, and the other one was around one year after. So it had a way longer pause, mostly to fix the actual Cyberpunk game itself, and then they kind of let towards a lot more folks out there buying the game. So even three years later, people still cared about it, wanted to see the updates, and I'd probably give it a really good thumbs up. I enjoyed it. It was a little bit boring for me, but I was also trying to stream and be entertaining like late at night. It was kind of harder, but I think I did enjoy the vibe, experience, the world, colors, and having a chance to replay through Cyberpunk 2 as well. I'd probably give it a pretty good thumbs on up. But so far, a lot of cool stuff. Like, let me know what you guys think about the brand new console covers and all that CES kind of news. And as well, I appreciate you guys all so much for watching here in the first place. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below if you guys want to follow. And 
and I just appreciate y'all so much for existing here in the first place. Love you guys. We'll see you guys probably another video on a little bit and check out the video yesterday for the CS if you guys want to see more on the Sony recap.